Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is more vision for young Christians. Welcome back, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of Bible Study. This is Bible Study episode 65. Today we're going to be diving into Acts chapter 4, verses 13 through 22. We'll be talking about Peter and John before the council. Today we have Brother Nate in the building to help us discuss the word for today. To begin, we're going to be um, starting off with a prayer by me. The word will be read by me today, and our end in prayer will be done by Brother Nate. So if you guys can, please bow your heads and close your eyes. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We praise you. We thank you for this day that you've made. I rejoice and began it, God. We pray as now as two brothers come together to read your word, God. We pray that iron will be able to sharpen the iron, God. We pray that you give us an understanding of your word that we'll be able to discuss it, God. That we'll be able to understand whatever occurred throughout these verses, God. We'll be able to have revelation and have a higher understanding of the word once we're finished, God. We just pray that we put it in your hands, God. You are Jehovah Jireh, Lord, who's our provider, God. Lord, people shall say, amen. 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 Now we'll begin the reading of the word. Verse 13 says, The members of the council were amazing when they saw the boldness of Peter and John. For they could see that they were ordinary men with no special training in scripture. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus. Verse 14. But since they could see the man who had been healed standing right in front of them, there was nothing the council could say. Verse 15. So they ordered Peter and John out of the council chamber and conferred among and then conferred among themselves. Verse 16 says. What should we do with these men? They asked each other. We can't deny that they have performed a miraculous sign. And everybody in Jerusalem knows about that. Now, here in the, the scriptures from verses 13 to 14, this is after the um, council um, brought Peter and John in because they arrested them for performing um, a miraculous miracle where they healed a blind beggar. Um, they were on their way going into the, um, the ch- on their way going into the church building, and the blind beggar who will always be in front of there, um, they healed them, and everybody saw it. Everybody was like, "Isn't that that person that used to be blind?" And um, you know, the council didn't uh, appreciate uh, God's people doing miraculous sign because they were they were very um law orientated very strict orientated and they complete threw god out the window when it comes to the way they led the way they're um serving in their ministry and especially with um a miraculous sign like this this upset them so they end up arresting peter and john brought them um brought them before the council they also brought the blind beggar um, to make sure that what they have heard is true. So they have Peter and John before the council questioning them and think they also have the, um, well, no longer blind. You can see now, but the former blind beggar. And lame. To, huh? Lame. Lame, lame, lame. lame he can walk, right. Yeah, he can walk now, yeah. Lame, ooh, lame. <laughs> My apologies, I don't want to, I don't want to. The royal information, lame beggar. Uh, now they have him before uh, the council. Now they have him before the council, and um, they're trying to persecute them, but they can't because there's no crime being committed um, in this uh, situation. The man was healed, there's nothing um, in the law said so you can't heal nobody. Good takeaway. So, as you're reading, that's some good, that's some good takeaways. Um, for the first part, because I, I heavily annotated this personally, um, this chapter, um, this conversation, and um, I think really what made them uh, uh, able to um, handle standing before the council, this started from back in the Gospels when Jesus told them that um, you're going to go before men that's going to try to... Um, persecute you try to intimidate you try to threaten you you don't worry about a thing um the holy spirit's going to give you what to say 
So you see the connection from that. And everything Jesus said, especially when you see our player in their lives, definitely true. The 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 Sahindran, the Sahindran, um, especially that first part, um, verse thirteen, I think was just a powerful precursor because it said that the members of the council were amazed when they saw the boldness of Peter and John, um, for they can see that they were ordinary men with no special training in the scriptures. They also recognized them as men who had been with Jesus, and um, the, the, one of the things I wrote down was that. Um, let it be known and said to you, because you know, I like to connect the dots from the text to like real life. Let it be known that you've been with Jesus. Let his glory be known, not our own. Um, let Jesus be known and um, let him be glorified. My key scripture last week for personal devotion was um, letting your light shine before men, things Matthew 5 and 16, to so make glorify the father which is in heaven and um one of the things that's so powerful about that was that they were just really doing what they'd already seen jesus do and that come from that come back from a previous study we talked about in john in john 5 where he said i'm only doing what my father i see my father do see what and it, that thing was translating now to the disciples and they had no special scripture training, but they had them. They they were in. They had the Holy Spirit, which Jesus told them in the Gospels. I believe it was in Matthew, and there's another point in Luke, where I believe where you're talking about the Holy Spirit is going to tell you what to say when you have to get before them, because you're representing Him. You're representing Jesus, and there's nothing really they could have did about it because they knew the law inside and out, so they knew. They're not incorrect. <laughs> I just even think about um, I thought about it on a social level, even like last year with some of the protests when we were just um, was just fed up with this brutal system, and some police would try to oppose them with what with force, but the peaceful protesters were saying, "Listen, it's our right to be here. You know, we have a right to peacefully protest." They couldn't deny them. They could only just try to impose force. And you see that will go on later on in the, in the not necessarily force, but you see they try to impose the strength of their influence or the strength of their power to the max without doing any harm. But the key thing is that because they have been with Jesus, everything that he said, everything that he told them that was going to happen, everything that he said was going to happen, um, whenever they faced persecution, it happened. And the spirit enlightened them and empowered them, you know? So that's the most beautiful thing about that. So that was my big takeaway from reading it again and recapping it. It's a good point. I like the um, point that you point out with let um, Jesus shine, let Jesus be known through you. Yes. Your actions, through the way you talk, the way you're operating, the way you move. So that God be known, let God be shined through through that. So that's a very key takeaway. Now begins to verse 17 through 19, which says, But to keep them from spreading their propaganda any further, they must warn them not to speak to anyone in Jesus' name again. Verse 18. So they called the apostles back in and commanded them never again to speak or teach in Jesus' name. Verse 19. But Peter and John replied, do you think Jesus wants us to obey you rather than him? I like especially the way Peter and John replied at the end saying, do you think Jesus wants us to obey you or him? Because I know the, the Holy Spirit was already moving um, and them at the time, especially from the beginning, but that's just that is just still an important question. Do you think Heavenly Father want me to obey you or him? Which is a trick. Which is a trick question. I feel like to them because I feel like they do know the correct answer for that, but they won't give the correct answer for that. Hmm. 
Because with them being so blindsided, so not having the cornerstone in their life and their foundation, they're drawn out. Interesting. That's a that's a very good that's a very interesting take on that. I was also going to say that um, something that's that stood out to me that they understood the power of names, and especially in the first century, they understood the, the power and the weight of a person's name can draw influence and is weighty, especially at that time, like historically. It, his name had such impact. You have to remember, like, in, in, in the confines of history, this man was tragically killed, you know? This man was... <laughs> this man was basically... a force. You know what I mean? And earlier in the chapter, it talks about, you know, Whose name did you do the miracle to begin with? Because that was really the heart of the confrontation, you know? And um, they asked about, you know, whose name did you do it? And, and you know, they, they answered them. And I know you covered that um, last one, but I, I, you see it come up again in this conversation that, you know, why did they ask about, about the power or the name of what the man was healed by? And, in um and in, 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 I wrote this down so, and I'm quoting uh, Neil Cross. This is powerful. In Semitic, um, Aramaic, Hebrew, uh, uh, Arab, Arabic languages of thought, a person's name does not just identify or distinguish a person; it expresses the very nature of his being. Hence, the power of a person is present and available in the name of that person. So think about that. This is why they wanted to shut it down because they said the nature of that person's name is released, whether they're present or absent. So that was a part that stood out to me in those three verses. The, state, the, the, the Sanhedrin knew and they tried to like really put a limitation on the name because his very nature Sorry, Dr. Mark Williams said it. Jesus, his name is the legacy of God's will. His name is the reality of his presence in the earth. And I was like, that's powerful. Yeah, Dr. Mark Williams, so correct me on that. Yeah, the very nature, well, the very nature of his name was what they were trying to limit. And that's why they replied the way that they replied. Whose name, whose nature, who, who are we really going to obey? We're going to obey the one who we've been with. Because he gave us a foreshadowing about you guys. So. <laughs> so I know that with history, they try to erase people. But you can't erase God. You can't erase you. You can't erase what has been done. Yeah, it's a very powerful principle in the, in the, in the Semitic um, circles that the name expresses the nature of their being. So they understood that principle because that was their culture. That's the culture. The Hebrew, um, Aramaic culture, that was the thought process. Hence why they wanted to limit the usage of his name, the saying of his name the impact of his name. So that's what stood out to me. But it's kind of funny. So it's like, y'all are people who are quote unquote, you know, like, the spreading uh, word, spreading mm -hmm. his miraculous word through people is being spread. Now you're trying to shut that down. So in a way it's kind of like funny to me it's ironic to us now reading it but think about it the the answer was already in the answer was already in what happened earlier in the verses 
where y'all talked about the chief cornerstone. And you and Gio broke it down in the previous video. So it already answered the question. And then we mentioned it. And once you rejected him, the first thing that begins to dwindle is an influence. And they were starting to lose their influence because the message of the kingdom was growing. And then historically, it, it crumbled the infrastructure, that religious, social, political infrastructure historically later on, you know? Another thing for another time, but basically that's what it was, you know? So, but once you reject him, you 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 you're you're on a whim. <laughs> so there's that as well. Definitely. But that but the, you see but you see what especially at eighteen that makes sense because says, so they called the apostles back and commanded them to never again teach or speak in his name because they don't want the nature of who he was spreading. So that's what makes nineteen where you stop that powerful. A powerful read. So, yeah. How you feel about all that? I feel like it gave me a better understanding, especially into their mindset um, of the way they, they were thinking, especially like spending the importance of name um, and how that legacy of that name and what that name has done that is so important and how they try to um, divert that by saying never speak in the name of Jesus again. So that, that makes a lot more sense to why they said that. Right. Because they understand they value the power of a person's name. And that's a general principle. Arabic, Aramaic, Hebrew cultures, yeah, especially. At that time. So we'll move into the last three verses for today, verses 20 through 22, which says, we can't stop telling about everything we have seen and heard. Verses 21, the council then threatened them further, but they finally let them go because they didn't know how to punish them without starting a riot. For everyone was praising Jesus. 22. For this miraculous sign, the healing man who had been lame for 40 years. Mm -hmm. Can't stop telling about everything we have seen. And I feel like that's a very important um, line because we, as people of God, it's our job to spread the word. It's our job to continuously let the um continue to let, let the works of God be known to others. Mm -hmm. That that voice just went out so much to me that I can't stop telling everything we have seen or heard. Right. And you think about it, if you lay down the if you lay it down and put it out there, um it, uh, one of the things that I, I wrote down here as I was like wrote some notes. Well, especially for that last part, I had started from 19, but um, in verse 20, they said they couldn't speak, but speak of what they'd seen and heard. And it was something that stuck out to me, kind of, you know, low key, really convicting me. The Bible talks about in Romans 10, talk about faith coming by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. And I think, especially if we just navigate this, um, as we continue to navigate this world, this 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 realm of living, it's important that we make sure our hearing is coming from faith, you know, hearing from the word of God. Because they were basically doing that. They were going off of the words of Jesus. You know what I'm saying? And they're hearing and what they'd seen, what they experienced personally. So the thing that 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 hit me was that. You got to make sure personally your your sight and your hearing is intact, because people can tell skewed stories, people can tell false narratives, people can tell misinformed narratives. Man, I've been guilty of that a couple of times in my life. Misinformed narratives, 
and, and make sure what I'm seeing, what I'm hearing is coming straight from the father, because that's how Jesus showed it in John five. I only see, I'm only doing what I've seen my father in, in the spiritual realm show me. Uh, uh, and, 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 and I'm just trying to bring that here to earth, basically paraphrasing, it, obviously, but now the disciples were empowered to do the same thing. All the council could do was threaten them further. They couldn't do anything. You see this come up again in the next chapter, you know, sorry, later down in chapter five. And one of the religious leaders actually gave a very viable solution, practical solution. And um, when you get to chapter five, you'll see it. Um, uh, Gamaliel, I believe it was, the, was the religious figure that, it's, that stood up because once again, something happened in the Sanhedrin and the religious leaders wanted to curb what was happening. But um, Gamaliel gave a very powerful solution in chapter five. And when you get there, you'll see, you'll be like, oh yeah, I remember that. That Ben, ben, ben they was saying something about that because that's going to be very key to how the rest of the book plays out. To me, I call it the X factor. Mm. But as you see, even with this instance, coming back to it, the man was, was lame for 40 years, his whole life. You can't deny that he was healed. You can't deny that there's no science. There's no, there's nothing medicine wise, not like they didn't take anything. The, all they did was say in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And what did that man start doing? Walking. So they couldn't do anything. And the thing I want to encourage the listeners with is that, you know, Make sure you're seeing and your hearing is right, coming straight from the throne of God. Make sure you're not hearing you. You're not hearing your soul. Make sure that you're hearing from him and you're seeing, you're seeing things from his perspective. Because when you see things from his perspective, you see a world that still needs Christ. You still see, you see people that, that need to know that God is listening and God is there. You, you, you'll see that there's, there's more needs and see that there's more to be done to manifest the reality of, of Jesus' kingdom, the kingdoms of the world becoming the kingdoms of Christ. Um, so check, make sure that the world knows that you've been with him. Also make sure at the same time that, oh, not but, but and also make sure at the same time how you're hearing, what you're seeing, because we've seen so much misinterpretation and see so much misconstruction um, student um, notions about Jesus, about how this thing works. But if you really want to make impact, be with him, do what he does. It'll get you in some, what John Lewis, the late John Lewis called good trouble. But you're better off beginning good trouble than the other way around anyway. So that's my few thoughts on that. Definitely. And um, by this single miracle that they performed it says in verse 20 that everyone was praising god and the council knew that if they would have punished um peter and john that it would have started a riot so while everybody is in this joyful mood of praising the heavenly father they would have um messed that up and i, I think that shows the power of um our speech that if we let God work through us, the actions, and we speak on to his people, it can change lives. Right on the money. Right on the money. Sorry about that. Right on the money. Um, you have to do that. If you, if you let him lead and guide your, um, your vocal cords, your voice, um, you'll get down into later on the power of the tongue in James. How powerful that one little thing is. If you let God have control of that thing, um, you're going to really see impact and changing of the world, changing of many guards, um, influence, and that's what and and, then, and that was the key thing. Like the, the 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 influence of Jesus was spreading, and they couldn't do anything about it because, as you mentioned, they rejected him. So. What was going to happen? His influence was going to grow. He's going to keep moving. 
the story of Jesus Christ, the story of the kingdom is going to keep moving to the end of time, you know? So it, it, just, just get with it. Don't try to fight it, you know? See what's God and see what isn't, you know? But other than that, you can't deny what happened because of the name of Jesus. So it just shows it as power and influence because of the nature of his name. And for somebody that's listening, that's why it's in his name you get saved. That's why it's in his name you get healing because that's in the nature of his name. You know, once again, Dr. Mark Williams talked about Jesus, his name being the legacy of God's will. So God's will for mankind, earth is, is through Jesus Christ. That's why he's the way, the truth, and the life. So just want to encourage somebody who might be listening is through Jesus Christ alone. So I just want to throw that in there too. It's through Jesus Christ. Um, have anything else? Uh, yeah. You have anything else written there? No, that was good. You you had some good insights and you, you, you're studying and you're growing and you're reading and not just personal devotion, but great insights, great insights. Great insights, man. Great insights, for real. The same me, this guy. My body not even here. <laughs> my body is tired. <laughs> <laughs> so God just speaking through me right now. Me, I'm not I'm not even here. But God is. Mm. You know, and you're gonna read this in Colossians that this is got really um as you just tell out, you know, it's all God. You're right. It's God working in and through us all. Um the, that part of scripture. That's why you're able to really grow in grace in the knowledge of Jesus Christ. Because it's God working in you. And Philippians talk about that too. So you know, be encouraged. God is working in you and through you. Um, they're noticing it in you because God has said, you know, um, it's it's me that gives you the ability to do good. It's Philippians chapter two. It's God working in you, both to will and to do his good pleasure. Um, you're just agreeing. And as you walk with Jesus Christ more and more, you're agreeing more with his will. So they're going to see that. That's going to be something. And that's the point. Let your light shine so that men will in turn glorify God. So that's really good. Just want you to understand that, that it's here. And you're partnering with God, partnering with his will, even in the little things, partnering with him, saying yes to Jesus regularly. Um, he's working in you through us, as the scripture says. So um, that's good stuff, man. I'm, I'm really thrilled. I'm thankful to be a part of this and um, happy to see that you're a part of um, really channeling a path way for your peers and those that follow behind you have an outlet and also have a place to express and to continue to grow in grace and the knowledge of Jesus Christ. So I'm, I'm proud about that as always. And I don't want to never not tell you, just want to make sure you know that you, you're being watched in a good way. So don't lose heart. Continue to live closer to Jesus and you're going to see influence and see some good things happening in and for your life as a result of you walking with the Lord. So keep on. Thank you so much for that. That's Gio, what Jai always tell me, respond with, could that be the glory? Mm -hmm. No, that's going to be my response because Javi always tell me that when people compliment you the work that you've done always make sure that you're bringing back glory to the Heavenly Father because you're not doing it on your own you're doing it through him mm -hmm. so. appreciate it yeah I need a glory definitely definitely but thank you for this I think it was very insightful I, I really believe that we're getting to the point. I think the big takeaway is the big takeaways for today for the listeners that, you know, make sure they know that you've been with Jesus. They're going to know that you've been with Jesus, whether you're learned or whether you're unlearned. And understand the power and the nature of the name because it, that, that's what they were trying to stop and they couldn't stop it. 
And you're responsible to carry the message of what you've seen and you heard. Remember, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of the Lord. Um, and from Romans 10 to just tie it in there as well. Just remember that. So make sure you you they know that you've been with him. And also when leaders try to, or, or, or when anything, the systems of the world try to shut you down, just remember what Jesus said. He'll, the Holy Spirit will give you guidance into what to say. Trust what he say, you know? Say what he says, respond with wisdom because the disciples could have just straight custom, custom all out, custom clean out because they knew they were foul, they knew they're the reason why Jesus got crucified. But also, above all, just make sure you're, you're continuing to tell the story of what you've seen and what you've heard, and that's going to only happen when you spend time with Jesus Christ. Remember the nature of his name, above all. So, that's a clean summary. I just wanted to give um. For our listeners, if you join the party later, if you scroll through the video, everybody do it. So <laughs> when it's more than 20 minutes long, unless you know that you know the content is good, you're going to scroll past some things, but take that with you. There's power in the name. The nature of his name is released. Jesus is the legacy of God's will on the earth, and that's what they were trying to stop, and they couldn't stop it. So, And it's still, to this day, can't be stopped, won't stop. <laughs> so I want to pray for us is remember that there's power in his name the salvation is through Jesus Christ the will of God for the earth is established through Jesus Christ God set it up that way that it is in his name so let's pray to that end fairest Lord Jesus I just want to thank you for your goodness to us today I want to thank you also for your mercy extended to us today to see today, not only just uh, spiritual, but also in the natural. Father, I just want to thank you that you're um, ever present with us, even in the studying and the breaking of bread. Father, thank you for this outlet, this opportunity to share your word, to discuss your word uh, with Ezra and as he's keeping his generations and the generation of follow motivated to follow Christ. Lord, I just thank you for his gift. And I thank you for this um, forum. Now, Lord Jesus, as we close this session, I just pray, Father, that you will uh, continue to guide us with your eye and continue to help us to know your word as we open up the book. David prayed in Psalms 119, uh, uh, Open up our eyes to behold the wondrous things of your law, of your precepts, of your, of your book. And Father, as we open up and continue to open up and continue to study, let us see the wonderful, beautiful, powerful things like we've seen today. So in Jesus' name, release virtue and goodness on the YouTube, on the stream. And for someone that might be listening, that may come across this because <clears throat> they've not received you in the pardon of their sin, also pray today, Lord Jesus, that they would just call on your name. And as they call on your name, as it said earlier in the chapter, men are saved through his name, the precious name of Jesus. And I pray, Father, that for those that watch and they will view, that they will be influenced, that they will, they will, be, uh, 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 they will be supercharged, as some would say, to continue to follow you, continue to listen and 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 tell the story of what they've seen and what they've heard not their own uh story that brings glory to their name but the story of jesus christ help us to be uh, sharpened at our core um with our hearing and our seeing so lord as we continue to tell your story as we continue to live out your story that the bible say the light will shine and father that uh, men will see and give god the glory uh and so continue to work in us, continue to work through us uh, as we endeavor to follow you the more. Through Jesus Christ, uh, we pray and give thanks uh, eternally for what you've done, and what you will continue to do as a result. Amen. Amen, amen.
This is it for the video, guys. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Thank you guys. Thank you guys so much. If you haven't already, like the video. Subscribe if you're new. Please turn on your post notification. That way, anytime I upload a video, YouTube will send your notification. This is Motivation for Young Christian. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye. <laughs>